With over half the world's population now living in cities, um, more than ever, our cultural institutions like here at the IMA are really playing an important role in the vitality of these places that we live. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, there's these other forces that are kind of disruptive. They're, they're actually kind of decentralizing um, these same institutions. So if, if anybody's from Boston or if you live in Boston, you could actually get an app that as you drive down the road and you hit a pothole, it actually sends that information out to the city, and the city knows then to come out and fix your pothole. This idea of participatory urbanism is catching on. So now the, this institution of the city doesn't exist. And if you're an institution and you're in an ur urban area, you really want to think about um, how this decentralization is going to affect you in the future. And so I'd like to talk about one of these cultural institutions, particularly this cultural institution around informal learning, what we call museums, and uh, in particular, science museums. How do we learn about science in an informal setting in these museums? And when you think of a museum, probably the first thing that comes to mind is, is what? It's probably a building. Right, these amazing architectural structures that we have. And there's a lot of reasons why uh, buildings are important for housing museums. There's, there's uh, you know, a lot of artwork has to be kept out of the elements. But for science, is that a necessary condition? To informally learn about our world, is that some, do we need buildings? And this is the first paradigm that I'd actually like to challenge, this idea that um, the, the places that we informally learn about science, the science museums are actually buildings. What would happen if we actually didn't have any walls to our museum? What if we took the learning of science outside of those walls? What might happen? Let's challenge that paradigm first. So if it's not in a building, then where is it? We might say, well, the environment, right? Anything outside the building could be where we learn, and it's the environment, right? But here's the problem. Whenever we think about environment, typically what we think about is, is this and not this. So the second thing we need to challenge, we need to challenge our own thinking on, is this idea that the environment is somewhere else. It's outside of our cities. It's not right here where we are and where we exist and where we thrive. And until we do that, we can't really construct the science museum of a city because this, the, the environment is somewhere else. This place where we would learn about science is not here. So this is the second paradigm that I'd like to challenge. The environment is not the city, it is. First one, we don't have any walls in our museum. We can actually do it right here in our cities. And the third, third thing I'd like us to think about is who teaches science and how is science taught? So whenever I look at this graph, I see, well, in Indianapolis, it was a pretty kind of a warm, spring and a really dry summer because I'm used to looking at this language of scientists which nobody else probably in this room really can understand because these are weird colors and squiggly lines that don't make a whole lot of sense to anybody else besides us scientist people. What if we change the paradigm on who teaches science? What if we engage with creative folks, with artists, and really look to the artistic community to do the interpretation for us? So scientists provide content, artists do the interpretation and the teaching. It actually elevates the role in, uh, in our cities, the role of artists, and in some ways maybe diminishes the role of scientists, but it actually, that collaboration can actually, actually be a really powerful one. So if we challenge this paradigm, this idea that only scientists are the ones that should be teaching science, and actually think about the role that artists can play in teaching science, can now build this idea of, a, of an informal science learning environment. It doesn't have any walls, it takes place in the city, and it's curated by artists, informed by science. That's our idea. So how do we test this idea? Well, this is a, actually a picture in my backyard. And I have, I have three little kids, and so I said, take a look at this picture and tell me what questions you might have. And they kind of slowly emerged with some questions. But what was most interesting about this is that um, one of my kids said, why are we looking at this picture? Why don't we just go outside of the backyard and check it out? <laughs> it's like, yes, that's exactly it. And what happens is when we understand place, when we understand where we live, we're curious about it, and we may want to, in fact, learn more about it. And so our science museum, the way we want to think about this new informal science learning environment is actually in the city 
in neighborhoods where people know and care and are curious about their out outdoors. How might this scale up? By scale up, we mean take it to the next level. I don't want everyone vis visiting my backyard as our science museum. How does it happen? Well, I think the mu museum curation principles are still, still apply, just apply it to the city. So we have to focus our attention. In this case, in Indianapolis, we're actually focusing our attention on, on the waterways. So there's six major waterways that are running through the city. And so the Science Museum of Indianapolis is really focused on watershed science and the connections between neighborhoods and those waterways. It's actually an initiative right now called Reconnecting to Our Waterways that's taking these principles of livability and connectivity and applying them to those six major waterways. And in that initiative, there's actually going to be destination points. And at those destination points is where the ex exhibitions, the exhibit halls of the Science Museum will be. And we'll use four art forms, poetry, music, uh, visual arts, and dance. So those four curated art forms will take place adjacent to those waterways in the places and spaces that those neighborhoods care about. So what's, our, what's the final equation for the, the city as a science museum? We use the arts informed by science, uh, deconstruct the walls, keep it in the city, and that results in this uh, museum of the future. Thank you very much. There you go.